Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning about support vector machines. Support vector machine is a fast and dependable classification algorithm that performs very well in a limited amount of data to analyze. A support vector machine is a supervised machine learning model that uses classification algorithms for two group classification problems. After giving a SVM model sets of labeled training data for each category, they are able to categorize new text. Compared to newer algorithms like neural networks, they have two main advantages. One is higher speed and better performance with a limited number of samples. This makes the algorithm very suitable for text classification problems, where it, it's common to have access to a data set of at most a couple of thousands of tax samples. Now we should be familiar with some uh, SVM terminologies. First one being hyperplane. A hyperplane is a decision boundary which separates a, between given set of data points having different class labels. The SVM classifier separates data points using a hyperplane with maximum amount of margin. This hyperplane is also known as the maximum margin hyperplane and the linear classifier is def it, it defines is known as the maximum margin classifier. The next terminology is support vectors. Support vectors are the sample data points which are closest to the hyperplane. These data points will define the separating line or hyperplane better by calculating margins. Now the third terminology is itself margin. A margin is a separation gap between two lines on the closest data point. It is calculated as the perpendicular distance, which is this, the perpendicular, which makes the right angle from the line to support vectors or closest data points. In SVMs, we try to maximize this separation gap so that we have, we get the maximum margin. Now, let us take an example and understand this terminology. Now let's imagine you have two tags, red and blue, and our data have two features, X and Y. We want to classify that given a pair of XY coordinates outputs if it's either red or blue. We plot our already labeled training data on the plane. A support vector machine takes these data points and outputs the hyperplane, which in two dimension is simply a line that best separates the tag. Now let us see it here. As you can see, we have two lines over here. And thereafter we select the best hyperplane as per the terminology that we decided based on the maximum margin that we get. Now this line is the decision boundary. Anything that falls on one side of it, we will classify as blue and the other side is seen as red. But what exactly is the best hyperplane? Let's revise. For SVM, it's the one that maximizes the margins from both the tags, as you can see over here. The gray line is not our decision or decision boundary, the best hyperplane, because it is not giving us the large margin. Whereas the darker shade line, which is called the best hyperplane, is our desired hyperplane here. Thereafter, now this example was easy since clearly the data was linearly separable. Now we could draw a line straight to separate red and blue. Sadly, usually things aren't that simple. For example, this example, uh, the image that you are seeing over here. They clearly cannot be a linear boundary separating them. Then how should we separate them? So we create, in this case, we create a new dimension called the Z dimension. And we rule that 
it be calculated a certain way that is convenient for us. That is z is equal to x square plus y square. X and y be the dimensions that we had taken during the linear case. Now this will give us a three dimensional space and taking this slice of that space, it will look like this. Now this is the slice that we are getting and if we look at on the other angle, we'll see that there is a circle which is uh, distinguishing the blue points from the red points. So this is the non-linear case of SVM. Now kernel tricks, also known as generalized dot products, these tricks are the ways of calculating dot products of two vectors to check how much they make an effect on each other. Now, according to Covers theorem, the chances of linearly non-separable data sets becoming linearly separable increase in higher dimensions, as we saw in this example. So kernel functions are used to get the dot products to solve SVM constraint optimization. Now, let us move forward to the code and understand all that we have studied till now. So we are importing our SKLearn library and thereafter we are importing SVM data sets and metrics and we'll be performing linear SVM. So we'll be loading a data set of Iris data set and we'll be splitting a data set. Thereafter, we'll be calling our SVM and from that we'll be calling a linear SVC and this is how its documentation will look like. The different parameters are stated over here. And the example, the verbose. Verbose is a thing that we had discussed last time. It shows the different steps while computing it. And thereafter, we have the random state, the max iteration. And thereafter, we have the different attributes. Thereafter, we have SVC. Here we have called linear SVC. We can even call, we can just call SVC. Then we have this classifier, and this is one of the examples that they have given us. Now, this is how we have trained our, uh, we have called our classifier, and we have fitted our X train and Y train. And we are substituting all these values in our CLF. And thereafter, we'll be trying to predict that how well does it perform on the unseen data. That is how we are, uh, we'll be using this classifier to predict the values on x-test. And thereafter, we'll be comparing the values that we get with y-test and we'll be calculating the accuracy score, which is simply that correct values divided by the total number of values. And thereafter, we have the classification report and uh, precision recall and confusion metrics. So the accuracy score that we are getting is 97%, which is quite well. As you can see, two of these points are uh, wrongly classified over here. So, so as to summarize, in our SVM, our main objective is to select a hyperplane with the maximum possible margin between support vectors in the given data set. For in our instance, the iris data set. Now, SVM searches for the maximum margin hyperplane in following two steps, which are first, generate hyperplane, which segregates the classes in the best possible way. There are many hyperplanes that might easily classify the data. We should look at the best hyperplane that represents the largest separation or margin between the two classes. Thereafter, the second point uh, in our process is that we choose the hyperplane so that distance from it to the support vectors on each side is maximized. And if such a hyperplane exists, it is known as maximum margin hyperplane and the linear classifier is known as the maximum margin classifier. That's all for today. Have a great day.